I want to welcome you today for uh, another session of Grace for Today. Uh, I'm Pastor Lee Cruz of the Grace Bible Church in Winchester, Kentucky. We're located at 250 North Main Street, and uh, if you have not, you're looking for a church, looking for a place to worship, we would ask you to come and, and, and uh, come and see us and, and see if we are not the place that the Lord would have you come. I, I still believe that the Bible says that God added to the church daily as such as were to be saved. And I do believe that. I, I think when you walk in a church, uh, you know whether or not you're at home. Uh, we may not be the place for you, but we may be. And that's what I pray and hope that you could come, that you see uh, that you could use your spiritual gifts uh, uh, in, with us and, and that uh, this would be a place that you could serve the Lord uh, from our platform. So that's what we hope and we pray for. Um, tonight, I just want to talk to you just more than anything else, talk to my congregation and I don't think there's any better congregation any place than at Grace. And I, you are so good to Cricket and myself, my wife. And uh, we thank you for all the things that you do for us. You know, it's continuous that you just you take care of us and you you bless us in so many ways. And we hope that that we can reciprocate back to you, uh, that we give back to you, and and that you come to a place that you uh, know that you're loved and you're cared for. And we hope that, uh, you know, that one of the things that we do, Jesus once said that if you have love one towards another, the world will know that you're my disciples. And I, I hope and pray that we just don't give lip service to that, but that you really feel that within our fellowship and our body of believers that you really know that you're loved and you, you're cared for and that there are people that will go out of their way to try to help you. And that's what I hope and I pray for. Let me have a word of prayer with you before we get into some things. So let's pray. Well, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all the things you do for us and all the things you take care of us about. Lord, we don't take any of that for granted. We praise you and thank you for how good you are to us. Most important, Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to let your son come into this world and die for us. You stopped Abraham from... Uh, killing Isaac or sacrificing Isaac, but you didn't stop yourself. Lord, we thank you for that. You tell us that greater love had no man than this and to lay his life down for another. But Jesus didn't give his life just for one man. He gave his life for all humanity. So Lord, I pray that uh, tonight would be a great night. I pray for this Christmas. It would be one of the best Christmases that our people have ever had. And they find the joy and the peace that they're looking for. I ask all that in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Well, we do want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And, and I guess that's the thing I want to try to maybe emphasize to you. I want you to have a great Christmas. I want you to have more joy and more peace than you ever had. And one of the ways I think that that has to be, if, if you're to accomplish that, one of the ways that has to happen is that you got to include the Lord in everything you do. Uh, you know, I know that maybe there's some people I'm talking to out there that have gone through tremendous things in this time. And, and they're, they're telling me simply, Lee, it's hard to have joy. But you know what? The Bible says in the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, uh, in verse the four, I think it is, it says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I will say, I will rejoice in the Lord. Now, I would never go up to a person that's going through unbelievable things maybe they've lost somebody or maybe they've gone through or they've been diagnosed with a disease or something and say well you need to rejoice in the Lord that would be stupid and crazy so what does that mean well the Bible says that little preposition in there that we need to rejoice in the Lord now what does that mean oh how the Lord loves you today no matter what you're going through you can rejoice in the fact that God loves you he tells us in his word that he loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you so much that he is merciful. And it doesn't matter whatever you have done, God will forgive you if you will come to him. The Bible says where sin did abound, grace did much more abound is what it says. It tells us simply that, that God loves us so much that he sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's what he wants to do in your life. You know, Jesus even tells us 
that all sins shall be forgiven men, except one sin, and that's the sin against the Holy Spirit. But I guarantee the person who probably commits that doesn't have a desire to come to Jesus probably. But you know what? It says all, all manner of sin shall be forgiven men, even blasphemy. And so it tells us that in, in, the, in the book of John. And yet when he says that to us, it tells us simply that we are to just come to him. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's what he says. And he, he goes on in chapter 2 of 1 John. He said, Little children, sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate in the Father in Christ Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us in the Psalm 66, 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That doesn't mean doesn't mean that you're lost again or God's going to give up on you but he's not going to do anything in your life as long as you regard that sin what does it mean to regard that sin that means you haven't confessed it you mean you it means simply that you're you're hanging on to it maybe it's an unforgiveness maybe it's it's uh, uh, maybe it's something you've done that you really need to go and just confess and tell him about it whatever it is you're never going to have the peace and the joy that he wants you to have until you get rid of it. He loves you, and he's saying we need to take care of it. Don't let that thing fester in your life. So whatever it is in your life this, this Christmas time, I want you to have joy. How can I have joy, Lee? Well, the Bible says that be careful in nothing. That's the old King James. Be careful in, nothing in, your, in, in the NIV or the new King James. It says be anxious for nothing. But in all things, in prayer uh, in all things in prayer and with thanksgiving, with that prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So let me ask you a question. You look around your house, I mean, you maybe got all kinds of problems, you got things going on. But if you had to list 10 things right now that you could be thankful for, what would they be? Do you have your health? Do you have, do you have, do you have food on your table? Do you have a roof over your head? Believe me, I know people that we feed before the coronavirus happened, we were feeding somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 people, 6,000 people a year. People coming to us for their food. Do you have food? Do you have a roof over your head? I know people that are sleeping outside in this cold weather. I've seen it before. We try to get them in. We try to do everything we can. But there are people that don't have a roof over their head. What about your children? Are your children healthy right now? I know families right now that are gathered at the hospital with their child. Maybe it's Shriners or maybe Cardinal Hill or wherever it may be that they're gathered there word sick about whether or not their child is going to make it. I know people right now that I love and I care about very much that are in the hospital. And they're, they're worried about a loved one that's trying to make it through right now. Those people that have experienced the coronavirus and have made it through. And we praise God. There's so many things you know, that you can be thankful for. We used to sing a song when we were children that says simply this. It says, um, count your blessings, name them one by one, and see what the Lord has done. Well, I will tell you this, and when you begin to count them, you're going to see what the Lord has done. And you're going to realize how blessed that you are. So that's the first thing I would tell you in this season, to have joy, would be to count your blessings and name them one by one. Well, you say, Lee, but yes, but this is going to be my first Christmas with somebody that I loved, cared for, a spouse, a mom, a dad, or whoever it may be, that they have already passed and gone on to heaven. Oh, but I'll tell you this, you can rejoice. Oh, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he may die, yet shall he live again. The Bible says over in the sixth chapter of the book of Second Corinthians, it says this, to be absent in this body, is to be present with the Lord. Oh, you can rejoice even to them to think about the joy that they're experiencing and that they can, you know, that they could, they're, they're going through tremendous time. Probably right now they're just getting through the first, first segment of being able to uh, get reacquainted with their mom, their dad, the, the children maybe, or whoever it may be. So rejoice in that. And you can also rejoice in one of these days you're going to see them again. You know, that one of these days that you're going to be gathered with them. The book of Hebrews tells us there's this great cloud of witnesses when we die. When we die, the first person we see is Jesus. You know who the second people we see? Oh, we see our loved ones. And it won't be long. 
It won't be long. You look around, you see all the troubles and the things that are going on in this world right now. And why are we, you know, and here we are, and, and it bothers us. And when we see people doing things that we know are evil, when we see people doing things that we know they should not do, when we feel like there's corruption on every hand, what does that say to you? You know what it says? It says this world's not our home. This is not where we belong. The Bible says that you and I have been seated in the heavenlies. What does that mean? That means heaven is my home. My citizenship is in heaven. And I got to realize I'm not home. I'm not home yet. Oh, how wonderful. But to look forward to that time. And so, you know, you say, well, okay, what do I do in the meantime? The meantime, I get as close to the Lord as I can. Because you know why? Because in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The closer I get to him, the more joy and the more peace I'm going to find. Because my joy and my peace it comes from him. He tells us that. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, I give unto you my peace. What does the world give? The world gives you that peace and everything is going good. It's okay. But when things go south, when the storm clouds begin to roll in, that peace seems to float away. But Jesus' peace is a peace that in the midst of the storms, he's asleep in the boat. Oh, the disciples out one time were in the midst of a storm and they thought they were going to drown and they actually woke Jesus up and said, don't you care, Lord, we're about to drown? And Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. He stood up and he said, peace, be still. And when he did, the waves ceased calmness and the wind quit blowing. And they looked at him and they said, well, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Oh, I tell you, he will do the very same thing in your life. In the midst of your storm, he will give you peace. He will give you tranquility. He'll give you serenity if you just get close to him. Remember as a child, when it seemed like when everything went crazy, all you had to do was climb up in your mom or your dad's lap. Let them wrap their arms around you. And all of a sudden, just a calmness came over. Because you knew everything was going to be okay. It's the same thing of our Lord. I think sometimes what we, we don't realize, it's all, that's all he's wanting. That's what the Apostle Paul said one time, that I might know him. Not know about him, but I might really get to know him. So I pray simply that you would be thankful that the joy of the Lord would be yours. As Peter said, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Look around you. That's what I ask you to do. Look around you and count your blessings. Be thankful. And think about one of these days. The Lord is coming to get us. And I believe it won't be long. Oh, I know there are people that think people like me are nuts. I could care less. Because my Lord told me. He said to me from his word. Let not your hearts be troubled. For if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and then he says this, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. Listen to what he says, that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said, Lord, we know neither way nor do we know where thou goest. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Oh, my friend, to simply turn your life over to Jesus. You can have a great Christmas this year. You can know that as your family gathers around you and, and now the Holy Spirit's inside you because you came to Christ is a wonderful opportunity to share your faith with your children and your grandchildren and, and, and with the, your, your, those people that you love, friends and neighbors that one of these days, oh, they may not understand right now. Oh, but the day will come when they will. So I pray this Christmas will be the one of the most joyous Christmas in the midst of the coronavirus, in the midst of having to wear a mask, in the midst of political corruptness and all the other things that's going on. In the midst of all that, our Lord reigns, and he reigns greater than he ever has reigned. And the Bible says, what shall they who do when the, when the foundations of the earth are destroyed? What shall the righteous do? 
And it tells us the Lord is on his throne. The Lord is on his throne. I'm telling you he's on his throne. Nobody gets away with anything. And one of these days the Lord will make all things right. Until that day I look forward to him. And the closer I get to his word, the more time I spend alone in prayer, or the more the real that gets. Real that gets. I want to pray with you, and I pray that this will be a tremendous Christmas for you. Well, Father, I thank, thank you for how your joy and your peace that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, that, that very soon our Lord Jesus Christ is coming to get us. It could be this Christmas. Lord, I once heard of a man that would ask everybody, do you think Jesus would come today? And they would say, no, I don't think he'll come today. And he would say that he said he would come in a time when you think not. Oh, my friend, be ready. If you're not ready, get ready. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bless these homes and things. And Lord, bless this nation that for over 200 years has been a lighthouse to the rest of the world but that light is beginning to go dim. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be with us. God, direct. Lord, we'll give you the praise and the honor until we're able to meet again. Lord, be with us, we pray. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you until we're able to have another session. Thank you.